Hello, everyone. My name is Nai Liang Xiang from Nagoya Institute of Technology in, Jer uh, in Japan. Today, I'm so happy to be able to attend this session and discuss with you about my research works. Here, I'm going to give you a presentation titled Ship Memory Alloy Based Dampers for Seismic Retrofit of Continuous Bridges with Unequal Height Piers. This is the uh, contents of my presentation. First, I'd like to introduce the background of my research. As we all know, to accommodate the complex topography, bridges in mountainous areas are preferably built with unequal height uh, piers, as we can see from these two pictures. Uh, because of the uh, unequal height, there usually exists a significant difference in the lateral uh, stiffness among different piers. If the fixed bearings are used at the unequal uh, piers, uh, the peer-to-peer -peer damage distribution when subjected to a strong earthquake event would be non-uniform or unbalanced, where it is clear to see that the shorter piers will become more vulnerable to shear or flexural failures than the taller ones. So Ashto seismic design guidelines specify the design concept of balanced stiffness among different piers in a bridge to avoid any uh, significant irregular seismic responses of the bridge. For example, uh, the effectiveness, uh, effective lateral stiffness ratio between any two piers within a bridge uh, shall be no less than 0.5. And for two adjacent Piers, it shall be no less than uh, 0.75. The guidelines also recommend some possible methods uh, for adjusting the relative stiffness uh, among the unequal piers. For example, we can use uh, we can change the sizes and or the reinforcement ratio of the pier columns, or we can use the uh, uh, flexible devices like the isolation bearings or dampers at the shorter piers. Among all the uh, stiffness adjusting measures, the one using flexible isolation uh, devices would be very desirable, which could be used as a seismic uh, retrofit option for such an equal height bridges. The common laminated rubber bearings and can be adopted, but it should be noted that it is very difficult to have any desirable lateral stiffness through uh, rubber bearings, since such bearings should also be used as uh, vertical load supporting members. And the determination of their properties should also depend on the vertical uh, load, not only the lateral uh, load. Considering this, some other uh, flexible dampers like the steel plate dampers can be used. These dampers work only in the horizontal directions with little effect on the vertical uh, resistance and thus their strength and the stiffness can be designed as we want. So in addition to that, uh, what if the emer emerging SMA dampers are used for such irregular bridges? So in this study, we are going to investigate the retrofit effectiveness of SA, SMA dampers for the unequal height bridges. In the second part, uh, the details and the finite element modeling of the prototype bridge will be described. Here uh, in the current study, a three-span continuous RC bridge was selected for a study. The span length is a uniform as a 25 meters, but the height of these two uh, piers, P1 and P2, varies, which are six meters and uh, 10 meters respectively. For this unretrofitted uh, bridge, fixed uh, bearings are used at piers and uh, at end abutments, uh, sliding bearings are uh, used. The finite element model uh, of the whole bridge was established using OpenSys, as we can see in the figure two. In this study, we selected uh, three uh, retrofit devices, the rubber bearings, uh, steel plate dampers, and the SMA uh, 
based keyboard dampers and implemented at the uh, shorter P1 pier and compared their relative retrofit effectiveness. Uh, these are the uh, no, uh, these are the analytical models of different retrofit devices. In the third part, the design of the SMA dampers for mitigating the seismic irregularity of unequal height bridges will be presented. So in the first place, we will, we will look at the lateral pushover curves for the unequal for the two unequal height pairs. From the pushover results, it is obvious to see that the shorter pairs shows a larger uh, force capacity and stiffness, but a less deformation uh, capacity than the taller pairs. There exist uh, big gaps between the shorter and uh, taller pairs uh, in terms of the force and uh, deformation uh, capaci uh, capacities as well as the stiffness. Therefore, to fill such big gaps between these unequal uh, height pairs, some retrofit design objectives are proposed uh, when, de when designing the SMA dampers. First, we need to increase um, the deformation capacity at the shorter piers. Also, the uniform uh, damage, the uniform damage between the shorter and the taller piers should also be maintained uh, following an earthquake. And most importantly, the use of SME dampers should make the bridge system have a sufficient recentering capacity. So based on the proposed design objectives, the determination method of the required strength of SME dampers was given. It should be noted that the implemented SME dampers are in series with the uh, shorter pier, but in parallel uh, with the taller pier. The strength of the SME dampers should not only avoid the uh, premature failure of the shorter pier, but also uh, ensure a restoring force for recentering the taller pier. As shown in this figure, uh, it is desirable that the flat shaped uh, uh, curve of the SMA dampers should locate just between the uh, pushover curves of the shorter and uh, the taller piers. Uh, the ostinate to Martin's uh, Austin's night to Martin side force should be uh, smaller than the force capacity of the shorter piers. And at the same time, the Martin side to Austin, uh, Austinite force should be larger uh, than the force of the uh, taller piers. In this study, we use such kind of SMA and dampers, uh, dampers with SMA cables uh, to be implemented at the shorter piers. And this is the uh, stress strength relationship uh, curve of a typical SMA. Uh, according to the design objectives, the SMA uh, strength, uh, strengths can be determined like that. And to have a fair comparison, the steel dampers are also designed with the uh, same capac uh, force capacity as the uh, SMAs. Besides, the rubber bearings are designed based on the uh, vertical load requirements. In this part, we will conduct uh, the IDA-based uh, seismic fragility analysis. And this is uh, a set of selected real earthquake ground motions comprising 160 waves. So we chose uh, a PGV as the intensity measure for scaling um, these ground motions. For each ground motion, the PGV uh, was scaled from 10 to uh, 200 at an interval of 10. At each scaling, we conducted 160 uh, nonlinear time history analysis uh, with the selected ground motions. For each bridge case, there were a total of uh, 3,200 analyses to be carried out in the longitudinal direction of the bridge. So after obtaining the 160 IDA, curves, we can calculate the proper uh, probabilities of damage for the bridge at a given intensity measure. In this equation, 
and the lower case n. The lower case n is the number of the ground motions with the peak responses exceeding a given damage state. The upper case n denotes the total number of ground motions, and here it would be 160. Uh, after, pl after plotting all the fragility points, the fragility curves can be generated. The comparison of the retrofit effectiveness among different uh, measures will be given with the fragility uh, analysis result as shown in this part. These are the fragility curves in terms of uh, the maximum uh, peer displacement as uh, as a demand parameter. Uh, the damage limit state of peer uh, yielding and the failure were selected for illustration. As expected, without any retrofit measures, the shorter peers here is a P1. It's uh, much more vulnerable than the uh, vulnerable to the yielding of failure than the taller peers. So after retrofitted this with these measures, including the SMA dampers, the fragility difference between the unequal uh, peers could be effectively reduced. A relative balanced distribution of seismic damage could be achieved. So in addition to that, if we use the residue girder displacement as a demand uh, parameter and investigate the relative fragilities of different bridge cases, it can be seen that the properly designed SME dampers could be effect uh, could effectively reduce the residue uh, deformation of the bridge system. So, in terms of the residue deformation based uh, fragilities, uh, the SME dampers show more effectiveness than the other two options, including the rubber bearings and the steel plate dampers. So, to make it more understandable, the sample. Uh, force displacement hysteresis uh, for the longitudinal bridge systems were plotted, where the x axis uh, represents the girder displacement, while the y axis uh, denotes the sum of the base reactions of all the bridge peers. The amount of energy dissipation was also given in the graphs. We can see from these graphs that the flagship the flagship hysteresis was very significant for the SMA retrofitted bridge system when the proposed uh, design method was adopted. The energy dissipation uh, through the hysteresis for the SMA uh, systems was also very large when compared with um, the other cases uh, with uh, rubber bearings, for example. Here comes the conclusions. So based on the study results, the following conclusions uh, can be reached. First, the unequal uh, peers may show significant gaps in uh, stiffness, uh, strength, and deformation capacities. And that's why the irregular seismic responses are generated. Secondly, uh, flexible devices can be well uh, adjust uh, the stiffness and deformation between the unequal bridges if properly designed. Uh, and if properly designed, they can also help achieve a, a uniform or balanced damage distribution among different peers. So SMA dampers as one kind of possible flexible uh, devices can also uh, balance, can also balance the seismic uh, responses between the shorter and taller peers. And uh, at the same time, um, they show great uh, effectiveness in uh, reducing the residue deformations of the whole bridge system compared with other uh, devices like the steel dampers or the rubber bearings. Okay, this is all my presentation. Thank you so much for your listening. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Jian, for your nice presentation. So I see no questions. I have one just quick question for you since you have time for one question. Like, uh, why did you choose PGV as your intensity measure for um, developing the fragility curve? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, we 
actually, we, we, we tried many uh, intensity measures and we found that PGV shows a, a very, uh, the PGV shows a very uh, good fit uh, in characterizing the, uh, the um, PSDM, the demand model in creating the demand model than the other uh, IMs like the PGA or any other uh, IMs. So that's why we chose the PGV as a uh, intensity measure in our study. Maybe um, for the other cases, uh, it will be different, but in our case, uh, the PGV is the best, I think. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so thank you, Dr. Xiang.